Hi guys, this is GKCS. We are talking about the prime queries question from the June challenge and what happens is you have a function given to you and you need to print out the result at the end. So here's how the function goes. Firstly, you have left, right and x and y given to you. Okay, left and right are a range and x and y are another range. So x and y define something, we, we'll get to that later, but left and right define the indexes in your array whose exponents, whose prime exponents you have to find out. Okay, so you take every element in your array in this range, find their prime exponents and then you sum them all up. That's your main thing. So for each number, you find out its prime factors. You find out the number of times those prime factors occur in its prime factorization. Sum them all up, sum up the exponents. And you do this for each number in the left to right range in your array. That's one part. The second part is that you don't do it for every prime factor it has. You do it for only those in the range x to y. Okay, take your time. If you go through this code, you'll see that that's exactly what it's doing. Okay, so this is our job. So let's break this down. Firstly, you need all the prime factors and the powers of those, of those prime numbers uh, for any given number in this range, a to j. So all the numbers you have in the array need their prime factorizations. How do we do that? Well, if you have checked out the video for prime number sieves, which you should, it's a prerequisite for this, then you'll know that there's a sieve approach we can take to find out all prime numbers between one to n in order n log n log log n time. Okay, so this is within the time limit. That's all I want to emphasize. Uh, but this CBS approach is going to do one thing. It's going to tell you all numbers which are prime or not prime. Now the algorithm that we had discussed was to find out all prime factors of a given number. You don't really need that over here. Okay, we can do something slightly smarter. And in fact, um, my friend Naresh, Naresh Malvia, uh, he explained to me this approach, which is you do the exact same thing. Once you come to two and you find out that it's prime, you make jumps of two and mark all numbers non-prime over here. So four is marked as not prime, six is marked as not prime and all that. But what you do is instead of setting a flag of false or true, which is prime or not prime, you keep an integer value in each of the numbers. And that integer is going to be storing a factor of that number. So two has a factor of two itself. So initially all numbers have their own uh, values set here. So this is seven, eight, nine, five, well, four shouldn't have been here, but yeah, three, so on and so forth. And now what's happened is you came to four and you set this value to two. So the cell at four contains a value of two. Index four contains value two. Uh, six also, cell at six, contains the value two because it's a factor. Okay, now you don't need to actually come over here and touch this number again. So you can use an efficient approach of prime number sieves and still get enough factors, at least one. Why do we do this? Well, if you're trying to find the prime factorization of six now, all you need to do is go for six, take this number and divide six by it. What do you get? You get three. Now go for the cell at three, which should have, because it's a prime number, it should have the number three itself. So these are the two factors, two comma three. And after you divide this, you get one. So that's when your algorithm stops. Another number which you can take is, uh, 33 maybe so 3 will hit this first which means 33 will have a value of 3 stored in it it becomes 11 once you divide it by 3 and once you go to 11 that's a prime number which gives you 11 okay the algorithm is pretty simple extremely similar to prime number sieves you should check that video out uh, and here's how you can get all the prime factors of a given number with their exponents of course okay so basic part done. So now that we have the prime factors and their powers for any given number in our array, what we need to do is extend that for a range. So from left to right, those indexes, you need to actually find out the answer for the sum of all exponents in that given range. So range query, most common data structure, segment trees. So if you don't know about segment trees, you should check out the video. Uh, but Segment trees, what they essentially do is they contain information in every node so that 
it does not need to pass this uh, this query on to the children okay so how are we going to store information over here look at this you start off in a bottom up approach okay there's lots and lots of stuff here but we just take four nodes to keep things simple let's uh, what should we have here 28 7 16 12 yeah and what are the factors we have for each of these numbers 28 has 2 comma 2 which is 2 occurs 2 times in its factorization and 7 comma 1 that's another factor which occurs once 7 is a prime number itself so 7 occurs just once 7 comma 1 16 has a really nice factorization which is 2 comma 4 and 12 has a factorization of 2 comma 2 I think yeah and 3 comma 1 wow 3 comma 1 so even though it's not visible you can think about the prime factorization yourself you know <laughs> so uh, let's merge these nodes now so every two children are going to have one parent it's not how stuff works in life but yeah let's ignore that part so 2 comma 2 2 comma 4 you have two arrays which are so of course these arrays are are having complex objects in them there's a comma so it has two attributes but if you look at the first number it's always sorted by the first number it's always sorted by the first number so uh, that's the prime factor actually so you're taking two sorted arrays these two sorted arrays and you're trying to merge them so there's a very simple algo for this uh, it's an order and algorithm the exact same one which you use in merge sort to merge two sorted arrays so uh, what you do is you take the you take two pointers and as we'll see here so we have two pointers 2 comma 2 2 comma 4 uh, we find if they're equal then we are going to merge them so 2 comma 6 is what we have up here because 2 plus 4 we just merge them and the other now this pointer moves forward and this pointer moves forward this is pointing to nothing so this array is completed and we have 3 comma 1 so this is the parent of these two nodes okay now where do I draw this yeah I'll draw it here uh, the parent of these two nodes is going to be 7 comma 1 but first of all we have these two pointers here and this is a smaller one so we'll, we'll use this up 2 comma 2 pointer push forward 7 comma 1 and 7 comma 1 they're equal so they need to be merged to 7 comma 2 and both pointers are now out both arrays are now completed okay so these are the two parents we have and for simplicity I'll draw the other parent in red or rather clarity 2 comma 6 2 comma 2 are where the pointers are we have 2 comma 8 as the sum of the exponents of the prime factors which are in the range of numbers given below wow I got that right in one shot yeah and 3 comma 1 the last prime factor which is to be taken into consideration is 7 comma it doesn't exist here just here so 7 comma 2 so you see that every uh, pair of nodes has one parent uh, what, what's also happening is that you are merging all the way up to the top so these four will also have two parents who in turn will have another parent and who in turn will merge with this node to the final root okay, so this is how your segment tree will be built what's happening here is that whenever you have a query from left to right you can split and then answer for that range query uh, in a standard segment tree way and but when you, once you come here you know you, you don't need to go down all the way you can just do a simple pass over here and then answer for this so the answer for this will be 8 plus 1 plus 2 so those are exponents of the prime factors now it's really nice that we have all the prime factors and their powers uh, for all the numbers in a given range but is it efficient enough well if given a query from left to right you will be hitting nodes log n nodes and those log n nodes could have quite a few prime factors okay as you see that the number of prime factors in one of these higher nodes can be pretty large uh, in the worst case it will be tending towards n so that would be order n for merging the nodes 
merging to sorted arrays. Standard segmentary stuff, you will be hitting log n nodes, you'll be merging them, and merging them is a pretty expensive operation, it's an order in operation. Now here's where the smart thing comes in, but it won't work here, but we, we just discussed that. The smart thing is you don't really need all the prime factors, you just need the exponents, right? Because that's what defines the final answer. So what you could have done was just keep the count of the exponents and the sum of the count of the exponents. 7 plus 1 would have been 8 over here. 2 plus 2 would have been 4. Over here you would have another 4, you would have 3 here. And now look at these two counts, they can be merged very easily with 7. On the other hand, over here it will be 12 and finally you'll have 19 here as the answer. So a pretty simple thing to do actually. Individually also, of course, you'll be storing the, uh, the exponents, prime exponents. So this looks simple and this is very efficient, but there's one problem, which is that we have forgotten the prime numbers have to be in the range x to y. And we don't have that information over here. It's 7, but 7 for the entire range, not for x to y. x to y could have been 21 to 23, which over here will give you an answer of 0. Should give you an answer of 0, but we don't have that information here. So it won't work. It would have had there not been a range issue. That's interesting. That's, that's where the core of this problem comes in. Making queries efficient. So let's say we go for our previous approach, the dumb approach, which is storing all the prime factors and their exponents. What's the cost of building the tree? Well, the number of prime factors that one number can have at most, let's say, is p. Okay, that's the maximum number of prime factors you can have. And how much is that number of maximum number of distinct prime factors you can have? Not much actually, because 2 into 3 gives you 6, into 5 gives you 15, no, into 5 gives you 30, into 7 gives you 210, and you see what's happening here. This number is rising very fast, so the number of distinct prime factors you need to have uh, to get to a really large number are really small. Okay, with a few prime factors, few distinct prime factors, you can get to a very large number. So this must be extending to what, 23 or I don't know, 31? It doesn't really matter. The number of prime factors you'll have here will be small, around 20 I would say, which is around log n. So what we can say is, maximum number of prime factors you have for every number here is log n. How many numbers do you have here? n. So the maximum number of nodes you need to store is n log n for the first level. What are we doing for the second level? We are merging nodes. We are merging nodes. That means the total number of prime factors will remain the same. The distinct prime factors will remain the same. You are not adding any extra prime factor here. So that is again n log n and so on and so forth up to the root. How many levels do you have here? Log n. So what are the total number of nodes that you require? This plus this plus this, log n times. So that's n log n into log n. So that is n log n squared. Pretty interesting uh, thing to look at actually. So this is the space and time complexity you need, n log n squared. So building the tree is not very expensive, n log n square. It's actually querying the tree which is taking worst case order n time, which will give you an order q n time complexity which you cannot afford. Okay, so this is the problem. This is not the problem. Building the tree is not the problem. So if you could make your querying faster, that would mean that you could answer this question. How do you do that? Let's come over here. And let's say you are hitting log n nodes. In each of the nodes, what's the information you need? the sum of the count of the exponents. Can you store that? Of course. When you're building this node, you have the exponent for each number. All you need to do when you're merging the sorted arrays, two sorted arrays, is keep a sum counter over here, let's say 8, 4. There's just one extra variable apart from this array, 
for the whole node, segmentary node. So that is four here, three here. And when you are validating for this node, you could, you could technically uh, count one by one, or you can just sum these two. It's the same thing. This is one entire node. 12 is another value here, entire node. So on and so forth. Till you have the whole tree made. And now what? Well, whenever you need to make a query, you will hit nodes, log n nodes, which will be in your range. You can answer for them really quickly because you have the sum of the exponents stored, which is an order one operation instead of an order n operation. And now what? Well, merging them, so it hits log n nodes. Each one is an order one operation, so that gives you order log n. Sorry, I just went out of the board, but uh, this is order log n and your q queries. So that is order q log n. Right over here, I got something slightly wrong. It should be uh, order n into log n, possibly. But this is much, much faster. This is actually going to solve the problem because each query is taking only log n time and q log n is within the time limit. So overall complexity for this problem is order making the sieve, which is n log n log of log of n. And we have discussed this in the video, so you can check that out. Uh, querying time segmentaries you can check out in other videos. I'm telling you all the prerequisites you need in case you don't uh, happen right now. So that is q log n, which is the query time. And building the segmentary like we discussed is n log n square. So q log n. Hmm. Will this still work? Actually, no, uh, I just forgot. Uh, you need the prime numbers in a given range, right? So this, this won't work, but we are very close to the answer now. It's, it's not too far. Uh, instead of taking the count directly, what you need to do is you need to take the count of numbers between x to y. Okay, so when you're building this segment tree, you need to have, instead of a count, you need to have another array of prefix exponent sums. So here's how the prefix exponent sums will come up. It will be seven, eight, because 7 and 7 plus 1 is 8. Here it will be 2 and 2 plus 2 which is 4. Here it will be 1, 3, 4 because 1 plus 2 plus 1. And here it will be 1, 2 and 3. Okay, just uh, have a look at it. prefix sums. It's something very commonly used. Now 1, 3, 4, 5, and six is what you have as prefix sums, and so on and so forth. Basically, you have a lot of prefix sum arrays here. What do we do now? What we need to do is we need to find out the prime factor slightly greater than x, because that's within your range from x to y, right? So from x to y, you need to find the prime factor slightly greater than x in your given array of prime numbers, and the one slightly smaller than y. So Every array that you have is sorted. Finding out a number can be done through binary search. And in case that number doesn't exist, you will find out the insertion point. So have a look at the binary search series uh, to find out the insertion point, another prerequisite over here. But yeah, insertion point found, you know what is the number slightly greater than the number you're looking for. You know the number which is slightly less than the number you're looking for. And then what you can do is you make two login queries basically. So that's an additional log n that you need here, which is q log n square basically. So you find out that range and using this prefix sum array, you have one index for the element slightly greater than x, which is i. You have the other index for the element slightly less than y, which is j. And all you need to do is in this prefix sum array, you need to write down. So it's getting tremendously ugly over here. I'll just get some space. Prefix, pre, prefix sums here, so prefix sum of j 
minus prefix sum of i minus 1. This is going to give you the answer for that node. And then you need to merge them in order one time. Basically, they're just integer values then. So this is, this is the answer that you're looking for. The second thing you need to do is build this prefix sum array, which is extremely simple. So prefix sum of i is equal to prefix sum of i minus 1 plus a of, or we'll call that frequency count, okay, of i. Standard stuff. So using these concepts, what you can do is you can answer for a given range of prime numbers and a given range of numbers in your array, what is the total number of prime exponents it has. Okay. So let's do a recap of this problem because it got a little complicated in the end. So we'll discuss that in detail now. Uh, you find out all the prime factors of all the numbers in your given array along with their powers, with their exponents. Okay. The second thing you do is you store that in a segment tree with that information all of the prime factors with all of the powers and when you're merging that when you're merging two nodes what you're going to do is you're going to take the sum of the exponents but you're going to keep the prime factors with you because it doesn't cost you too much to keep a segment tree like that finally what you're doing is you're finding out the insertion points for x and y in all the nodes where your range hits okay so from you had two ranges l to r and x to y so wherever L2R hits in your segment tree, you're going to be finding out insertion points of X and Y. Because you have a sorted array of prime factors, you can do this really fast by research, log n time. So two queries, two log n, that's what's happening. You find out the two insertion points. Those two, all, all numbers in that range now have to be included. So using prefix sums, what you can do is you can do prefix of uh, so let's say the, the two points are i and j. So prefix of j minus prefix of i minus 1 is your answer for every node. Okay, And every node's answer then needs to be merged up to the parent, which is the sum of all the answers, to give you the final answer. Okay, This is how we are going to be solving this problem. And like we saw, the time complexity for this is q log n into, we are making uh, two insertion point queries. So that is log n squared plus n log n. And building the tree is pretty expensive, which is n log n squared. So essentially it is q plus n into log n squared. which is fine, which is within the time limit. Order always helps. So this is how we solve prime queries. It's a slightly advanced problem, so you might need to go through the prerequisites. I'll be mentioning them in the description, and I'll also put the code for this in the description, which reminds me, if you want to contribute, you could. That would save a lot of time. Uh, the next thing I'll be picking up is clone me. So uh, clone me is a problem from the June challenge again. So uh, that should come out in a few days. If you want a notification for that, you can subscribe, of course. And uh, nothing else. Until next time, then, see you.